So, uh, good evening. Uh, the talk will go about async versus promises versus callback. That has no chance at all. Uh, yeah. My name is Alberto. I'm a software developer. I work as contractor for this deal that is a spin off for the Deakin University. Uh, we work with the AI research and support and new software development. I apologize for my accent, and uh, if I start speaking really strangely uh, with words you don't understand because I probably I start speaking in Italian or Spanish again, just to <laughs> tell me, and I will switch back to English, probably. <laughs> so, what's a callback? Who knows what callback is? Who uses callback? Oh, come on. You should know that. No, we can't. Oh, so, okay, it's pure evil, as you know, and comes from functional programming. And uh, while I was searching a, a good phrase in English to explain it, I found this one that is really precious. A callback function, also known as a higher order function, is a function that, pass, is, that is passed to another function. Let's call this other function another function. As a parameter, the callback function is called or executed instead of other function. A callback function is essentially a pattern and established solution to a common problem, and therefore the user of a callback function is also known as a callback pattern. I don't know, but this is a callback, <laughs> okay? It's a function that assumes the function to be a parameter in another function. <laughs> but this is what is the dark side of the callback because a lot of developers lost them in the dark side. <laughs> yeah. yeah, callback has. So, is of, obviously we want to avoid callback help, and uh, newbies or not, sometimes misjudge the need of their software, of the software they're writing, and get lost here when they probably want to know something in the future. So they sh have, have should use it. a promise. A promise object represents a value that may be not available yet, but will be resolved at some point in the future. It allows you to write a synchronous code is an, in a more synchronous fashion way. Synchronish code, okay? Again. We can use promises for our purpose, whatever it is. And we should control the flow of what we want to do, coding. Using properly promises will allow us to do that. But for example, another mistake is not to differ make a difference between serial flow or par parallel flow and the difference is just, just not in the name, obviously. <laughs> and uh, when you are writing the code, you should already know what you want to achieve with that <coughs> script or function or whatever. So be sure to implement it correctly. Now, at least have an idea of what you have to do or spend some time in a spike, put it in Jira, whatever, <laughs> just ask for time, document yourself, try to achieve a good result, because you can lose your job, and sometimes other people will have to correct your work and will be a pain in the arse for somebody probably somebody else. So, you, for example, should avoid health in promises because there is also the catch health. That is nonsense in promises. You should just follow what, they, what are called the best practices. In for each languages, there are 
few different things, but at all is using common sense. Just if you have any doubts, try to study a bit because there are a lot of dates every day with Node.js, for example, and uh, with, a, with most of the codes language. Try to keep yourself updated and your code too. So, nowadays, we are really above Node 8. <laughs> And uh, where async w was born was distributed with node 7.6. And uh, it was not uh, LTS, so a lot of people was afraid really to update. Now, you, you don't have any excuse. You, you should just update to node 8. And uh, you really want to do it because, look. So, this is a really simple promise. I apologize, I just downloaded the code, did not work. And this is how you use it. Okay, it's not on the top level. You will have to use async and then tell the log to await for getting the JSON, then return done, make the request. That was a little bit complex with promises, not much but this is an easy case. And still, less coding, more clear, more maintainable. Error handling. How we can handle all this error, this catch that is commented, and this that will function like that, but still cleaner. When you're making a conditional assumptions here, it's really easier to read for everybody to achieve a result. You know, seems more logic to me. If you have any question, do not agree. Question. No, yeah. Does the await pattern maintain the this object? Why that it's called back? Promises mess about with this object under the await. Like inside the console log, you can do this dot something where in the callback you can. Is that right? Not sure. <laughs> Not sure why they wrote it like that. Did anybody have an answer? Do you, do you mean that <laughs> this this dot, inside yeah. that then the callback it's running? Yeah, uh, you've, you've lost the value of this. You have to set it somewhere else to change your context. Where inside the a async, you probably haven't lost that context where the this dot works. Well. I think, yeah. Yeah. Because you're not throwing a piece on the part, so we're right inside the way you're not throwing a bunch of the As he said. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, conditionals, intermediate values. So, when you're writing promises and <laughs> you have the good idea to nest them, you will change your idea pretty quickly. Probably will want to do something like that again. You have this that will solve really the same stuff in a really cleaner way. So when you are just making an error of debugging, Call promises, 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 then write the error. So when you're catching the error here, you're just your error, you just call promising then 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 and here it's cleaner. Don't know, I probably seem obsessive compulsive, but I think the best option is to start using a sync and a wait. To be quite frank, there is also a um, middle way using async and promises that will complicate a bit the things, and I didn't have the time to prepare the slides for that, 
but worth a try. And uh, I will add to these slides, to the bibliography, the link for uh, a few articles you can read about, because really worth a try. Now, I'll let you go. I was a bit unsure writing in English, uh, just copying that. Uh, I think it was, was one is one of the most revolutionary features that have been added to JavaScript in the few past years, indeed. And uh, I think that they really got it, makes really clear the mess that you can do with promises. And for somebody that works with synchronous coding, is really easier to switch to node. And if you were just use it, just too much user to look at a synchronous code, you could really get used to use async in no time. And if you, you were using C sharp, you already know this stuff. So update, you have no excuses. You don't have to be scared because no date is a long time support now. And if this happens, do your choice. I, I, I do not want to be this guy again. <laughs> I've been this guy a long time ago. I've been this guy too. But I'm not this guy anymore. <laughs> Plan it and do your updates, always. Thank you. <laughs>